Let's learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube. Naturally, if you have a Rubik's Cube handy, you'll want to go get it and be prepared to use the pause button a lot. We solve the cube in eight steps. First, we have the, the daisy, then the easy, and the one, two, three move. Those three moves are going to give us, are going to solve for us the, the bottom layer of the cube. Then we'll do the step four, we'll do the middle layer. That's the belt that goes around the middle of the cube. And then with steps five, six, seven, and eight, with such fun names as fur earth, the fun move, the R prime F move, and the furl move, we'll have the entire uh, top layer solved. All right, here are the ground rules. For most Rubik's cubes, the white face and the yellow face are on opposite sides. White face, yellow face. We will solve the entire cube with the white face on the bottom and the, and the yellow face on the top. Okay? So if your cube has something other than yellow opposite the white face, then that color's face will always be on the top. We are now ready for step one, the daisy. Now, as always, we keep the yellow face on the top. Our goal is to give this yellow center four white petals, that is, the four white edge pieces, so it looks like a daisy. The first place I look for my white edges is on the middle layer, okay? Now, let's see, when I see here, oh, I've got a white one right here. I just bring that to my top. That's my first daisy petal. This could be my second daisy petal, but you know what? That's too easy. I want to teach you something. Let's, let's look on the bottom for, for one here. Oh, okay, so, so here, here's a daisy petal. I'm going to first bring it to the, uh, I'm going to first bring it to the middle layer, like so. So now it's on the middle layer, and once something's on the middle layer, you can turn it up, and there it is. Let's look for another one. Anything on the middle layer? Oh, I've got one on the middle layer right here. Now I would turn that one right up, but I'd lose this white daisy piece, so let's move that daisy petal out of the way so that now when we move it up, there it is. And one more. Anything on the bottom layer? No. Let's see. So it must be... Oh, look at that. There's one right here at the very bottom. Let me move it in position. Let's, let's get those other daisy petals out of the way. Rotate that 180 degrees, and we're done. Now pause and practice this step many times until you're comfortable that you can get all four white edge pieces to the top layer. The next step is actually easier. Okay? After the daisy step, step two is so easy, I call it the easy. Now every petal of your daisy is an edge piece with two colors, right? Here I have white and orange, white and blue, white and red, white and green. What we now do is we twist our cube. We are always keeping the yellow on the top. We twist our cube in such a way that the, like the green here finds its center. So watch, I'll twist. And now, look, the green has found its center. Okay, once it finds its center, we twist the, that entire face 180 degrees. So right now it's pointing at 12 o'clock. After I... After I twist it 180 degrees, it's pointing to 6 o'clock. Here, let's do another face. Oh, look, the orange has already found its center. So let's twist that. Let's, I call this dialing down. Let's dial down. Okay, now we're here. How about this one? Oh, well, okay. If, if um, I have the blue and the red already lined up, but if they weren't lined up, if they were in this situation, I would just go hunting around until I found the center, twist it, Dial it down, just like that. doesn't matter whether you do this clockwise or counterclockwise. And finally, with the white-red piece, notice the reds are matching. If they weren't, you'd, you would adjust it so that they were and dial it down. And now once you've done that, take a look what you have on the bottom. You have a white cross. Not only do you have a white cross, every piece is where it's supposed to be, right? We have the we have the, the blue, the white blue where it should be, the white red where it should be, the white green, and the white orange. You can almost think of it as the, the cube is wearing socks. Okay, so when you look around it, you see that it's wearing socks. Okay, we're halfway done with the bottom layer. The white edge pieces are in place. Now it's time to get the white corners in their proper positions. All right, let's first find a white corner piece. Now the best place to look for them is on the top rim, 
Okay, not the top face. I'm not, not so interested in the white one over here, but on the top rim, like one over here. Okay, we just have this one over here. Okay? So, um, now twist the top face. Notice that every corner piece has another color, in this case, orange, that's also on the top rim. Okay, so you see we have a white orange piece here. We're going to twist the top so that the orange color finds its center. So let's say I have white orange here. If I twist the top just like so, then, then the orange has found its center. And the white square attached to it will still be on the rim, either on the left side or on the right side. So go ahead and point to the white square with your index finger, okay? Um, like, like here, there's my white white square, and I'm going to mark it with one of these stickers so we can see it later. Okay, a little happy face. Okay, so um, now if you're pointing with your left hand, then the next move will use your left hand. If you were pointing with your right hand, the next move will use the right hand. All right, so the, the next, the, the move that we're going to learn, I call it the one, two, three move. Now, with the pointing hand, in this case, in my case, it's my left hand, I'm going to twist the side of that cube away from you, away from me. All right, so here, the first, uh, first I go one, like that. Now, two, with your index finger, twist the top face towards you. All right, I'm twisting the top face towards me. Notice, I, notice that I'm now staring at that old white sticker. It is staring me in the face, or I'm staring at its face. And finally, that's step two. And finally, step three, I bring that white square down by twisting the side of the cube towards me, like that. And now that white corner cube is in its proper position. Not only do I have a white there, you'll notice that we have green matching green, and the orange matching the orange. Was that too fast for you? That's okay. We've got three more corners to go. Again, if we're lucky, we'll find, we'll find another white corner on the rim. Oh, I've got a couple of these here on the rim. Okay, let's see. So uh, let's, let's see. I've got a white red here. Let's twist the top until the red finds its center. Just like that, red, red, diagonally touching, and the white piece is on the side. Okay, here, let's, let's do a, another uh, sticker so you can watch what happens to that white piece. Okay, we're going to do the one, two, three move again. So now this time I'm pointing with my right finger, so I'm going to use my right hand. So one, I twist it away from me. Then two, I twist it towards me. You see I'm staring at that face again, all right? And then three, we're going to bring that down, all right? We're, we, we, we bring it down, and now that face is in its proper position. You can tell it's very happy. Okay, let's do it again. Two more corners. I look around the rim. Oh, there's a rim, right? White and blue. Um, I'll let the, I want it to find its center, so let's twist it so that the blue matches its center. The white is on the side. The white will always be on the side, either with on your right side or on your left side. You, you don't want to have a white facing you here. You're not going to want to have a white, that, you, that white in the back. You want it on the right side or left side. Here it's on my right side again. So with my right hand, I do one, two, there's that white sticker, and, and down like this, three. All right, let's look around, look around. Okay, I've got one more to go. It's white and blue. Oh, look, it's already in its right position. All right, and now I get to use my left hand in order to put that in the proper position. So here we go with the left hand. We do one, away from me. Two, I twist the top towards me. Three, down. And now the bottom layer is solved. Now that was easy. Maybe it was too easy because there was a complication we didn't actually uh, experience. So let me set that up for you. Suppose there aren't any white pieces on the top rim, 
but you do have a white piece on the top, uh, on the top uh, face, like here, okay? So nothing on the rim. So in that situation, all you do is you twist the top. You want to get that white, white piece above one of the unsolved positions. Doesn't matter which one it is. Just, just um, it can't be over something that's already been solved. So find something that isn't white, preferably. So here's the white is now directly above the orange. Okay, and now with the my right hand because it's on my right side, I'm going to do the one not not the one two three move, but the one two two three move. All right, when I go one two two three, watch, we go. Uh, we go one, two, two, three. Now, it didn't solve the bottom, but that white piece is now on the rim. A mathematician would say, we've reduced this to a problem that we know how to solve. Okay, so here, let's now fi fix it by letting the, the white has a blue neighbor. The blue finds its center. And let's see, uh, so it's, it's here, the white is on the right, so with my right hand, I'll do one, two, three, and that gives me the completely solved bottom. There's only one other situation to, to be aware of. If you don't have uh, any whites on the top rim uh, or even on the top face, then all you do is you find, let's say you had a white that was in position here, do a one, two, three move, and that will bring that a offending white piece to the top rim. And once it's on the top, you know how to solve that position. Okay, it's essential that you practice step three and steps one and two for that matter until you can confidently solve the bottom layer. And I encourage you to do so now. If you get stuck, don't be afraid to rewind me and I'm happy to explain it to you again. Okay, you now know how to solve the bottom layer. And from now on, every time we finish a step, the bottom layer will still be in its pristine state. Let me show you one of those steps right now. We won't really need it until step six, but it's so easy to learn and so fun to do that I call it the fun move. While I teach you the move, I will also display some notation along the way. I won't really explain the notation now, but I want you to start seeing it now so it'll make more sense when we need it in step five. It's done entirely with the right hand. And all you do is twist the right face. That would be, um, oh, by the way, I'm making sure my yellow is still on top here, okay? So all you do is you twist the right face and the top face. Okay, as follows. Now watch and listen closely. Okay, I'm twisting the right face and the top face. We sometimes call the top face the up face as well. But okay, here we go. We twist. Out, twist. In, twist. Out, twist, twist, in. Okay, here, you try it. All right, you go out, twist. In, twist. Out, twist, twist, in. Notice that after the move, the bottom layer is still pristine, no matter how you've oriented it. Out, twist, in, twist, out, twist, twist, in. All right, this time I'll do it with numbers. These are the numbers that we used in the one, two, three move. It goes one, two, three, two. One, two, two, three. One last time. This time I'll have the notation displayed. Remember, we're twisting the right face and the up face. It goes out, twist, in, twist, out, twist, twist, in. Isn't it fun? Okay, now practice this a few times and eventually you'll learn it. You'll learn it kinesthetically. Your hands will just learn it so you don't even have to pay much attention while you do it. Okay, once you've got that down, it's time for step four. All right, I'm gonna peel off the, the happy face uh, stickers right now, so we, since we won't need those till later. By the way, I've known some people who solve the Rubik's Cube by peeling off the stickers of their cube and <laughs> rearranging those. I just have to warn you, if you do that, you know, yeah, if you find that step three wasn't working for you, it's possible one of your kids has already peeled off some stickers and put them in the wrong places, and that could, that could create problems. Okay, now we've completed 
the bottom layer, all right, completely done. It's now time for the middle layer. Uh, now, there are no corners in this middle layer, right? It's just the belt that goes around it. So we just have to do four edge pieces. We do these one at a time. We begin by looking at the top layer for any edge piece that doesn't use the color yellow. Say I've got a green and orange, I got a red and green, I, I, and I've got two, two things that have yellows on it. I, I like red and green, let's do that. Okay, so I've got a red-green edge piece. The first thing you do is you twist the cube until the, the, the color on the rim, that would be the green piece, finds its color. Okay, so um, finds its center. So here it is, we find its center. And now on the top, there's red. What do I do with red? Now red will either be on this side or that side. Is it here? No, it must be there. So with that, with that, I'll point to the, to the red side. In fact, I'm going to give it a slap. Mentally or physically, slap the left side. And now your first step is you twist the top in the direction of the slap. So if I go like here, I'm going to, with my index finger, I'm going to twist the top towards me, okay? And now what you do is with that same slapping hand, you perform the one, two, three move from last step. We go one, two, three. Now, uh-oh, we lost a white from the bottom, right? But that's not a problem. The white is back here on the rim, so we're going to fix it. We'll fix it by, the white has a red neighbor, the red finds its center, and we fix it with the one, two, three move. One, two, three, and notice not only is the bottom now fixed, but that red-green edge piece that we started with is now in its perfect position. All right, if, if you didn't catch it, that's okay. We got three more edge pieces to do it. So, you, so here's another, um, okay, here's another one with green and orange. Now I got lucky, the green had already found its center. If it wasn't, if it was here, I would have twisted it so that the green finds its center. Its neighbor on top is orange, Orange is on the right side, I'll slap it with my right hand, and in the direction of the slap, I'll twist the top, just like that. Now I do the one, two, three move with my slapping hand, with my right hand. Here we go. One, two, three. Uh-oh, we lost a white, but that's okay. We'll, we'll fix it using the one, two, three move. With my left hand, it's always with the opposite hand that will fix it for you. One two, three, and now that piece, the orange-green piece, is where it belongs. Let's look again for, okay, here, we have a blue-orange piece right here, right, blue-orange piece. Actually, you know what, let me do, just show you an example because what would happen if, if all the pieces had yellow on them and we still weren't, weren't done? Like, let's say we found ourselves here with a, a blue-red piece you know, and everything up on top had yellow, but these weren't in the right position, then all you do is you do a one, two, three move. No slapping required, just do a one, two, three move. One, two, three, and then that, and then fix it. Say, so, okay, well, I'll fix that, that white piece. One, two, three, and now you've brought that blue-red piece from where, the, where it used to be a problem over here, it's now up here on the top. So we, we sort of kick it up to the top, and that works. So, okay, now let's do it. Now, so the blue-red piece, the blue finds its center. It's got a red neighbor. With red, I slap, twist the top. We do one, two, three, fix it with the other hand. One, two, three. All right, almost done. Uh, let's look on the rim. I've got one more to go. Here's my, here's a blue, blue orange. We're lucky the blue has already found its center. I'll slap with the left, like that. And now with the left hand, I do the one, two, three move. One, two, three. And then I'm going to fix that white with my right hand. First, the orange finds its center. And then we fix the white. One, two, three. And now we've completed the middle layer. The middle layer is probably the longest step in the process because you've got four cubes to fix. Great! We're halfway through our algorithm and we have two-thirds of the cube completed. Before we do step five, we, learned, we need to learn some simple notation. There are six faces on the cube 
And according to convention, they are labeled front and back, right and left, up and down. We abbreviate these with their first letters, F, B, R, L, U, and D. Note that in our algorithm, the up face will always be yellow and the down face will always be white. Okay, I don't know about the others, but, but up face will always be yellow. When we use a letter to represent a move, it means to imagine that you're looking at that face, then twist that face in the clockwise direction. For example, the U move, if I'm looking at the up face, then, uh, then a, a U move would look like this. I'm twisting it clockwise, right? The R move would be to look at the right face and twist it clockwise. I'll do it slowly, just like that. That's an R move, okay? Uh, to move counterclockwise, we use the prime symbol. For example, to move the move R prime would undo the last R move by turning the right face counterclockwise. So here's the move R prime, like so. Notice that the R move moves the right face away from you, but the L move moves the left face towards you. That can be a little confusing, right? The L move would look like, um, I'm going to look here and turn clockwise. That's an L move. There's L prime, right? Or from here, there's L prime. From here, here's R, and going back is R prime. Okay, it sounds confusing, but as a practical matter, we mainly perform R, U, and F moves, and their reverses. By the way, mathematicians might prefer to say things like R inverse and write it this way, but R prime is much easier to say and write, right? Okay, so we're ready for step five, which I call the fur earth step. See how it's written where our goal will be to create a yellow cross on the top face. And the best, so we don't have a yellow cross. I got a yellow line here, that's kind of nice, but I want a whole yellow cross. And the best time to perform this step is at nine o'clock. Now, what do I mean by that? If you're lucky, you'll have on the top face two yellow edge pieces that are touching diagonally, along with, of course, the, you know, and also touching the center. So you would, that, those, you'd have three yellows that form nine o'clock. If you have that, you're in good shape. If, it, it, you, you'll only have to do this next step once. If you don't have it, like here, we're going to have to do this step at least twice. Okay, so now here's the fur earth step. Okay, so the fur, F-U-R, is performed clockwise, and the earth step is done counterclockwise. Okay, here we go. Um, fur, F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime. And notice we now have nine o'clock. You might have to do that fur earth move twice, to get nine o'clock. But once you have nine o'clock, you're ready to do it. You, you only have to do it one more time. So um, if, if, if the position looked like here and it was three o'clock, then make it nine o'clock. If the position looked like here, like uh, 3.30, you know, make it nine o'clock, okay? So, so you, these two yellows are away from you. And we do fur earth one more time. All right, here we go. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime, and we now have a yellow cross, okay? Congratulations, you're done with step five. If you wanna practice this move a few more times, go right ahead. You can do fur earth all you'd like, and unless you make a mistake, you won't disturb the bottom two layers. If you do make a mistake and create a mess, well, it's a good time to practice steps one to five anyway. Are you ready for step six? We're going, to make, we're going to make the top entirely yellow. And best of all, you already know how to do it. We just use the fun move that I taught you at the end of step three, 
Remember how it went? Out, twist, in, twist, out, twist, twist, in. Now, before you do the move, you look at the top face here and count the number of yellow corners that are on the very top. Okay, how many do I have here? I have two. Oh, too bad. The best number to have is one. If you're lucky, you'll only have one yellow corner. Okay, but if you have zero or two yellow corners, then you're going to have to do this fur earth step. Um, I mean, you're going to have to do this, the fun move step a few times. Okay, here now, um, by the way, it's impossible to have three exactly three yellow corners. That's actually a consequence of those even positions that we talked about earlier, but I digress. Okay, so here I have two. Now, when you have two on the top, what you do is you rotate your cube until you find a yellow on the, on the, the face, the, the, uh, the front face here in the upper left corner. So I have a yellow here. Do I have it anywhere else? No, no, no. Okay, so the only way I can orient this is with the, with the yellow in the upper left corner of the front face. Okay, here I am looking at it. And now we do the fun move um, at least once, maybe twice. Here we go. I'm going to go out, twist, in, twist, out, twist, twist, in. Oh, lucky me, I now have one yellow corner. Okay, if I had two yellow corners, I'd orient my cube until I found a yellow over here. But with one yellow corner, it's, it's, it's nicer. You just orient the cube until the one yellow, the one yellow, uh, uh, one yellow sticker here is in the bottom left corner. Okay, so now I'm looking here on the up face. My yellow corner is here, and I'm going to do this fun move at least once maybe twice. I can tell from here I'm going to need to do it twice. All right, so we'll do it once. Out, twist, in, twist, out, twist, twist, in. Still one yellow corner. Once you only have one, you're, you're in good shape. You're always going to have one or you'll be done. I orient my cube so that one yellow corner is over here in the bottom left. I'll do fun move one more time and we'll be done with the step. Out, twist, in, twist, out, twist, twist, in. Oh, it's looking magical, isn't it? All right, so now the top face is entirely done. We are so close to being done. Here we are at step seven. At the end of this step, all of the, all of the top corners will be perfect. The first thing you do is you look around the top rim and see if any of the sides have matching corner colors. Okay, so usually I do, but I think this time I don't. That's okay. Red, orange, green, blue, orange, red, and blue, green. Well, in this situation, it doesn't matter how you orient the cube. Uh, and so let's do the R prime F move now. I find that this is probably the uh, hardest step to learn. It's only nine twists, but it's worth memorizing the mantra. So repeat after me. R prime F, R prime B2, R F prime, R prime B2, R2. I'll say it again. R prime F, R prime B2, R F prime, R prime B2, R2. And that's it. The B2 means to twist the backside twice, okay? Like twice, like that. Doesn't matter whether you twist it clockwise or counterclockwise, it has the same effect. If I do B2 again, I'm back to where I was. All right, and R2 means to do the, the, the R move twice, like one, two. I'll do it again, R2, one, two. All right, so let's do this step very slowly. Of all the steps, this was the one that I found myself messing up the most. All right, and if you mess up, You'll have to start all over again, but think of it as good practice of the earlier steps. Okay, since I don't have any matching uh, corners, it doesn't matter how I orient it as long as the yellow side is on top. Here we, do, here we go. I'll do it slowly. R prime F, R prime B2, R F prime, R prime B2, R2. Now, when we have finished this step, 
we now have at least one side that has matching corner colors. Let's see, that's red, orange, green, red, blue, blue, that's good, orange, green. So take the blue, blue, and that should be on your back. I like to match it up with the actual blue side. I just think it looks nicer. Okay, so here I've got the blue, blue, blue on the back, and, um, and now we do R prime F one more time. And once we do it, everything, uh, all those corners are going to be perfect. All right, one more time. R prime F, R prime B2, R F prime, R prime B2, R2. And now uh, we'll, we'll orient just so that our matching colors are matching. And look at that, isn't that pretty? We've got red, green, orange, and blue. Okay, ready for step eight, the final step of solving the Rubik's Cube. Now, at this point, everything should be in its proper position and orientation, except for three or four edge pieces on the top. Now, if you only have three edge pieces out of position, then you'll have one completely pristine side. And just like with step seven, you'll want that to be on the back side. Now, let me see. Do I have any? Uh, no, this is out of position. This is out of position. I've got four out of position. So just like with step seven, it doesn't matter how I orient the cube this time. But we're going to have to do this furl move a couple of times. I call this the furl step with an exaggerated F because of the way the move is spelled out. I'll display it for you now, but I remember it with a simple mnemonic. So here it is, look at it, and here's my mnemonic. As I think about furl, I start with FFU, okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do that for you here, FFU, and then I bring both sides down, all right, that's the R prime L, both sides down, then I dial around, that's FF, then I bring both sides up, that's R, L prime, and then that's enough, uff, U-F-F, -F. so I do up, F, F, okay? Now you'll notice we have a pristine side, okay? So if you didn't have a pristine side before, you will now. All right, we're gonna do this one more time, maybe twice, we do furl, one more time, I'll say my words this time instead of the notation. All right, so furl, so I do F, F, U, then both sides down, dial around, both sides up, and that's enough. And look at that, we have solved the Rubik's Cube.